Hello, my name is Dmitry, and today we continue to build an e-commerce website that will go into production. Today we initialize our backend for frontend with Next.js 13, GraphQL and Tailwind CSS. Let's move initialize frontend ticket into a progress. Now we're on the main branch of our project. Let's check what we did in a previous video. We initialized backend. We have an API application. We got few libraries, data access library with Prisma. We have a feature that manages users. And also we did generate some Prisma based types. In this video, we will initialize Next.js. By doing npm i d, which means development dependency, narval next. Let's create a web application by doing nxg using generator next app. Name of the application will be web with tag scope web. We will discuss scopes later on. Don't worry about it. Actually, very happy with using styled components and emotion and solutions like that, but we will use Tailwind CSS in this project. Let's pick CSS. Let's run NX migrate latest. And npm install. So now we have new application called web and also a next generated web end-to-end -end tests. It's just Cypress test. We're not gonna use it at the moment. We may do it later on, but I'm not sure about it. But let's keep it like that. And we have web application with pages, some generated stuff in here, some tests and other stuff. We have now next 13.1 installed and that means we can use application directory now. Let's create app directory and we not going to use pages directory in this project. Let's follow Next.js guide how to create app directory correctly. We should enable extreme experimental flag called app dir in next.js config should add experimental app dir now we have it in place but also we should create root layout inside app directory layout.tsx do we see us export informatic so here we got our basic root layout. So as you see, app directory must include a root layout component. Let's create head element where you can keep your meta text and some stuff like title. And also there is a bunch of information how you can migrate your current application using pages to app page. But we don't need this stuff at the moment. Let's create some empty page. Export default function page with the Hello world from next.js 13. And let's try to run it to see if it works. Set package JSON. Let's now have start API and start web. Let's start web. So it does some stuff and we have our website on localhost of 4200s. Hello world from Next.js. It works. Let's add Tailwind CSS to our application. Let's copy this command. Open terminal. 
paste it in here and wait. Let's initialize Tailwind CSS by this command. Inside our application, open it in terminal, init Tailwind. So it created Tailwind config and PostCSS config. We will copy the one we have in docs. It was one PostCSS config. And also we should copy Tailwind config. I can copy Tailwind config. As you see, it, uh, everything which what inside the SRC page or components will be processed by an X Tailwind, but we also need to include app directory now. So we should also import some styles let's create a folder called styles inside our web application new file global css and add what we copied let's add those styles inside our root layout styles global css now we're pretty close to finish with the adding Tailwind. But one more thing, we should add a link to PostCSS config. So inside project, we should add it in options for build. So that's a web app and also for serve. That's web. To verify that, we should implement some basic components using Tailwind classes. Let's go to the Tailwind website and just copy some example HTML and use it inside our page. For some reason, it's not closed. Now we are fine with that, but we also should uh, use some avatar image. Let's get it from placeholder avatar and copy unique one. So we later one can use it with the user IDs. Let's now side packages on, try to run start web. Stop and run. Voila, we have it. Let's add actually some style fixes like te text white and also margin of six. You see, we just now added Tailwind CSS. Let's now connect our Next.js application with our backend by using GraphQL. Let's open terminal and paste this command. Let's create JavaScript library named data access GraphQL inside directory web with compare SVC buildable and with, with scope web. Not gonna test it. We will use GraphQL code gen with the GraphQL request. Search for it. GraphQL type SDK. So by using GraphQL schema like that, we will be able to have an output with GraphQL SDK. So we will implement it right now. Let's import all needed packages. I'll leave all commands on the video description, so don't worry. Also, let's install GraphQL request itself. We need some config for GraphQL code gen. I have one already. Let's add it to our tools. And inside GraphQL code gen folder, we have code gen YAML, where we have a link to our GraphQL schema. 
and we have defined extension inside our applications or libraries which we will transpile into our SDK. So here that's a place where we output our types parsed GraphQL files will be generated with the gen.ts here's a link for uh, our types and we will import gql library from graphql request and that's a pretty basic config we will need a command to run our graphql generation it's going to be graphql code gen with the link to our config and watch now we actually have to create some gql.ts so we can generate something inside web library data access graphql we need to create a file with extension gql.ts let's call it data access dot gql dot ts inside this file we just gonna write all our queries and notations let's copy some query from our playground let's run api and inside graphql we already have get users query so inside data access gql let's create const get users equals gql and paste our query in here let's add import statement now we can generate our sdk so it picked up our data access graphql and generated data access gql.gen.ts and what's inside we have our queries which are accessible via sdk we need some one more file called get graphql client .ts export const get graphql client which will receive url and that's it for a moment yeah we will need graphql client with the url and headers let's close it like that and we need headers what types of headers we have it's gonna be maybe function headers in it okay let's reformat it prettier and we will return but not the client itself but get sdk that we just generated the client so we generated get sdk function with the function on it get users that we described just here and we're able to get actual sdk actual client by using get graphql client let's actually try to use it inside web application that's the library inside web application let's have an directory data access with the file name graph here client.ts where we're going to do the following export const gql which will be and get graphql client from the graphql api 
why is that weird thing happening here? Because we didn't export get GraphQL client. Let's get back into our libraries, web, src, and export get GraphQL client. So now we can replace it with the correct import and we have our GQL in place. Later on, we will use environment variables to have these URLs. But for now, for now, it's okay to use it like that. Let's have inside our page and call and request GQL get users and let's log out our result. So as you see, I forgot to add a wait async function. So yeah, in Next.js 13, pages could be an async component and we can call our backend calls directly from a server. That's why we're using actually Next.js 13 to have ability to make some backend requests using those service side components without having get service side props and some other stuff. So now it's way easier to write components and also it will ship way less JavaScript into your client. So that's why I'm using Next.js 13. And we have fully typed result. So that's users and we have map user And on user, we have like username, set and students, everything that we have in our database. And we didn't write much of a TypeScript actually. And we have everything typed. So isn't it beautiful? I think it's very nice solution to generate your types. But let's actually Render something. Users map user and we will return HTML. Let's copy our HTML, remove unused parentheses. Not that printer. Now it's happy. Let's have a key on our HTML element with the user ID. Let's have an image also supplied with ID. User ID, so we have different images. And let's render some, I don't know, user ID as well and user email. user email. Let's log our users. And side web. Model not found. Let's try to rerun it. Now we have everything in place, but where actually our console log? That's in our terminal, because we do it on the backend. And on the front end, we just get the results. Let's check it. We have an HTML request with the all HTML already inside. As you see, I have a some IDs inside my HTML response. So that's a perfect solution to ship your HTML really in an efficient way to your users. Let's overview what we did in this video. We have created an application called web with app directory, which new thing in Next.js 13. 
we created some dummy page which does some request to our backend and we generate our GraphQL SDK by using GraphQL code gen with some configuration. Based on our queries, some SDK was generated, completely typed, and we use that SDK inside our web application by supplying it some GraphQL URL. So that's it for this video. If you like it, hit the like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.